Hello, welcome to Life Talk for June the 9th, 2017. I'm Mark Crutcher. And I'm Renee Hobbs. Thanks for joining us. Well, Renee, um, you have a story that you came to me with here just a little bit ago and wanted to talk about. Tell us what's going on here. I did, yeah. So thank you, Ms. Curran, for sending us this um, this video. We really appreciate it. And this is what this we're- This idea. We, this right. idea, this is what we ask people to do. So, right. Um, the the video that she sent is is pretty actually hilarious. Um, judge Mathis, he's a daytime court um, judge, and Wendy Williams, um, she also does a talk show in the mornings. Um, I guess she airs Monday through Friday, but she called Judge Mathis for um, an interview with him just to sell a good story. So she looks high and mighty with her people, right? And so she calls Judge Mathis and she wants to call him out on him cheating on his wife and getting another girl pregnant, okay. which Judge Mathis, I know it's, yeah, this is talk show for you. But uh, Judge Mathis says, that's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. This is not real. This is false. And then he goes in and totally bashes her because she has had eight abortions and mm. she is bisexual and she's, I don't know if she's still a coke addict, or, but she was. And so he was calling her out left and right and he made a statement and said that uh, she was not gonna be popular with the anti-abortion crowd, that we were not gonna like her and, um, and that she needs to find some spirituality and some God in her life. And, uh, Sounds like he's right. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely so. Well, this brought up the issue that, um, that we've touched on before about multiple abortions, mm -hmm. women having multiple abortions. Yeah. And right now we know the statistics uh, show that approximately 40% of all the abortions done in the United States Mm -hmm. are subsequent abortions. There's been a, and of course the pro-aborts always said this would never happen. Right. That abortion was just there for that rare case. Right. A woman makes a mistake, she gets pregnant, this is there to take care of that. But now, you know, we're seeing, and you and I have talked to these women that have had four or five, oh, yeah. or six we abortions. Oh yeah, we get women that call us that this is their birth control basically. Right. And they, they get pregnant, their solution is to go to the abortion clinic ASAP. Right. So, um, there's there's a, there's several factors here we want to talk about. First off, um, it's entirely possible that there are tons of women in this country who've had multiple abortions and don't even know it, because many forms of what are typically called birth control yeah. actually act after fertilization, which right. means by definition they're abortions. Yeah. IUDs always work right. that way. Right. That's the way they're designed to right. work. Yeah, because the baby can't implant right. onto the... But the baby's the already created. That's right. Just can't implant in the womb because right. of the IUD. So you might have a lot of women out there that have had eight or nine, ten, untold number of abortions yeah. uh, because of IUDs and, and some types of birth control. But let's just talk about the mechanical abortions or the surgical abortions that the that that is the subject here. Here's my question. The, the pro-aborts, if you try to say that there's something wrong with a woman having an abortion, they'll jump all over you, right? Right. There's nothing wrong with a woman having an abortion. Well, if something's not wrong once, it's not wrong a hundred times. Right. It, the morality of an event mm -hmm. doesn't change how often the event happens. Right. So if, if one abortion's not wrong, why do they get all exercised at women like this that have eight or nine, 10 or 15 abortions? Right. Why, do they, why do they get mad at them? Right. And the reality is, the reason, they, the, reason the abortion industry gets angry with these women, and they do get angry with them, sometimes angrier than we get with them, is because they know this exposes one of the abortion industry's biggest lies, that women don't use abortion for birth control, and it's just for those hard cases that come up mm -hmm. once in a million years. Mm -hmm. um, and the abortion industry knows that they don't want to be put in the position of having defend to defend what this woman's doing. Right. And this is the problem. Go ahead. No, well, and, 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 and like you said earlier, that it happens to all the time right. for women that are on birth control and that do get pregnant even if they're not on birth control. And they may not know it. Right. And they don't know it, especially if they have an IUD, they're gonna have abortions without even knowing right. it. Um, because they don't understand how, how IUDs work works. and they don't understand right. that anything you do that ends that child's life after fertilization is an abortion. You can call it birth control, you can call it whatever you wanna call it. It's an abortion, that's what it is. Right. Um, but, but again, back to this other issue. We've got to hold the abortion industry's feet to the fire. Everybody out there needs to do this. And if you're arguing with someone 
um, a relative or a friend, there's, uh, and they're saying, oh yeah, this, the idea of a woman having, you know, multiple abortions, five or six, seven, ten abortions, whatever, that's outrageous. I would it never. It doesn't happen, yeah. Well, even if they think it happens, I would never support that. Mm -hmm. that that's just outrageous. Make them explain to you why one abortion's okay, but five abortions are not. Why is one morally acceptable, that, but five are not morally acceptable? And I've a actually had debates in the past with, with pro-aborts who will say that they actually think multiple abortions should be illegal. Women should not be allowed to have that. Well, what about the right to choose? Mm -hmm. How many abortions does a woman have to have before she loses her right to choose? Right. These are the questions that we need right. to be putting in front of the pro-aborts. And l let, me, let me pose a hypothetical to you. Let's say that you see an abortion clinic waiting room and there's five women waiting in that waiting room. And one of these women is there to have her fourth abortion, right? Mm -hmm. The other four women are all there to have their first abortion. By the abortion industry standards, what these four women are doing is okay. But what this other woman, this woman that's having her fourth abortion is doing mm -hmm. is morally indefensible, right? Right. Five babies are going to die either way, right? Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't matter if it was one woman who had, I mean, five women who had one pregnancy, mm -hmm. and that would be okay with them or one woman who had four and four women who had one. Right. Five babies are gonna die in both scenarios. Right. And we cannot, as the pro-life movement, allow them to get away with trying to take the moral high ground on the multiple abortion deal. We're the only ones who are truly upset about multiple abortions, and that's because we're upset about one abortion. You right. shouldn't get having one abortion, much less four or five or eight. Right. But, it's, but still, we've gotta go back to the fundamental question here. And we need to make sure every pro-abort in this country, everybody who calls themselves pro-choice, every single one of them mm -hmm. is made to answer this question about multiple abortions. And the, the salient point is, if one abortion's okay, why are five abortions not okay or 10 abortions? And right. at what point do they become not okay? Is it two? Is it three? And what happens if it's three? Mm -hmm. What happened between the second abortion and the third abortion that made this one wrong and this one right? Nothing. They're, they're, we need to force them to ask the, answer this right. question. We cannot allow them to have their cake and eat it too. It's just a reality. Right. right. So we were asked if um, about the Russian women because they have multiple abortions, right. which we all know that is very true. And then, um, hold on real fast, Matt, Matt Harrison says, hey, Mark. Oh, hey, Matt. How are you? <laughs> You love this stuff, don't I you? I do, yeah. I mean, I can't really see the comments all that well, so if I if I um, say something to you and I only get a little piece, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, um, we've already, as you can tell, I hope you can tell, we've done a lot to try to up the production value of, of, of Life Talk on Facebook Live and YouTube and so forth. Um, but as we've told you, we've had some new technology in route, and we've made some changes and as soon as a couple of other pieces get here, and they may get here today, um, we're going to be ready to put some new stuff in place, and we're going to really ratchet up the quality of, of Life Talk. The it's going to be an exciting show. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the uh, audio is going to be better. Uh -huh. um, the video is going to be better. We're going to be able to have multiple cameras rather than just the one camera right. that we have right now. We'll be able to have guests. We'll be able to have phone guests like we used to on the old show. Yeah. And so you guys get ready. If you want to be on Life Talk and talk about something, introduce one of these subjects like this, right. you know, we'll have you have the ability for you to be able to, to uh, join us by phone. And um, it's gonna be really nice. I'm, it'll be good. It, it'll be back like the old show that we did, right. except we'll be doing it every day. Yeah. And it'll be live on, on Live Talk, I mean on um, Facebook. Yep. So it's gonna be neat. But yep. um, anyway, this is a good example. If you will tell us what you want us to talk about, or the subject that you bring up, um, we are certainly more than willing to do that. Now, we get a lot of nutcases that, that call us and, and want us to talk about truly bizarre stuff. And, and some of them, to be quite honest, they want us to talk about stuff that's going to create, that's, that's intentionally designed to create dissension, dissension. within the pro-life pro movement. movement yeah. We are not going to do that. We're so not answering those questions. If that's, if that's what you're wanting to do, if, you, if you're here to create dissension within the pro-life movement, then you go somewhere else. We're not interested. Um, we've had plenty of that over the years. I've been the target of it. I've been the victim of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you. You've been attacked recently. Um, we're, not, we're not interested in that. So if that's what your game is about, then go out and start your own Facebook Live and get your own audience and y'all sit around and complain. But um, that's not what we're about. Anyway, yep. that's all we got. Anything that's all else? We got. That's all.
That's all you got? No. Um, um, not in that case. <laughs> Catherine. She's, Whoever, she's not in that case? She's not in that case. Okay, good Thumbs for her. Up. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Until next time, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. We're here to win because winning is how this killing is going to stop. We'll see you next week.